Hello everyone, and welcome to the Album Colors Podcast, the podcast where everything is going to be okay. Everything. I'm your host, the man who shuts himself in his house and plays blackjack all day, the Art Sozo Show. And today I'm joined with the man who really fucking loves air conditioning, Arashi. And also, the woman who... Hello everybody. <laughs> and also, the woman who cracks melons under park benches. Dooms. Uh, I was going to call myself Ship Poster Supreme, but I like that title better. <laughs> Hello, and why, yes, uh, I've crawled out of my air-conditioned home just to knock on your door. How's it going? Uh, so, uh, so today, if you can see from, I mean, the people in the chat, the people in the voice call can't see, but uh, I've got set up, so we're today, of course, we're going to be talking about Amori. Now, I and Rashi, yep, we've played it. Uh, Dooms has not. But here's the thing, uh, and I know people are gonna say, "Well, why'd you bring on people who didn't play it if they're not if they're not gonna add much?" Well, one, it's my podcast, my rules. <laughs> I think that's it. <laughs> two, uh, <laughs> I two. I mean, like, I asked some people. I asked some of my friends if they were like, you know, I, I thought about bringing back the podcast. Would you be interested in coming on? And Dooms, I think if I recall, you said something like. Uh, it, whether or not you've played the game, you think you could still add some input or whatever? So I, was I like, feel like I could at least have some kind of opinion. Yeah, so I thought, like, hey, you know what, that works. But yeah, so I should go without, which is you all that saying, because I have it set up on setup here. Yes, there are going to be major spoilers for the game, but to give a quick rundown with it, we are going to be talking about uh, the beginning of the game, uh, how it kind of starts out. And then, just for the sake of, uh, like, getting everything down, I think uh, we should talk about the beginning of the game, the shut-in route first, then the uh, reunion and everything, and then uh, pretty much the truth and everything leading up to the neutral and good and bad endings. This game has a shut-in route? Sounds like my kind of bag. <laughs> <laughs> well, why didn't you say so? So, uh... Doom's got curious now. <laughs> well, now you say that, now I'm hooked. <laughs> right, so, I think the first things first, after we got the spoiler warning, I think first things on the agenda. How y'all doing? Mm, I'm doing well, alright. Doing... It's been a bit of a weird day, but... Doing alright. Uh, yeah, I'm doing... I I'm made doing homemade fine. raviolis I... today, and it was an ordeal. What, none of that Chef Boyardee nonsense? <laughs> nah, bro. <laughs> yeah, but I'm doing all right. I, I just got home. I've been home an hour from work, so I'm just unwinding. Alright. I, uh, I'm, I'm doing all right. I'm still in the middle of, like, looking for a job, because my current one uh, it was just for the summer, and I'm, I'm done with that, so now I'm looking for another job. But other than that, I'm doing pretty yep. good. Alright, so I think with that out of the way, I think we can get started with Amori. So, uh, I think more or less I'll just talk about the story to my best knowledge, because I've got some, I got some stuff right down here, but it's very much just points, like this, this, and that, and I'm just going to be talking about uh, my how much I recall. And then I think uh, at some points we'll just talk about, you know, what we think about it. Alright. Alright, so first things first, let's talk about the prologue. So it starts off with, uh, it starts off with a pretty kind of cryptic and weird uh, cutscene with two kids together, which in this is, it's going to be a Morian Basil, just together and it has some text that more or less alludes to an event that somewhat is going to be preceding it. Uh, I'm, I'm going to try to keep this more or less light on the spoilers until we get to the respective points. So, I like I, I just want to say this right now. If you haven't played a Mori and are interested in wanting to play a Mori, um, go go either watch it or play it and then come back to this. Otherwise, because I, I I will urge you right now. This game is if you're really interested in it, this game is not worth spoiling for you. And so, by all means, if you do decide to go play it, do not read the Steam description. Yeah, and also don't go look up the music because uh, yeah, there's uh, some uh, 
Don't go look up the music on YouTube, because there's some people both have a dark sense of humor and like to spoil shit. And just remember, don't read the YouTube comments under any of these videos, not because they'll spoil shit, but just because YouTube comments are fucking toxic. That's fair, too. Also, don't yeah. go read Twitter comments, because Twitter, just fuck Twitter. Just, just don't go on Twitter unless it's for the humor. <laughs> You know, like normal people. Anyway, carry on. <laughs> yeah, all right. So, we start off in a place called White Space, where it's stated that you've been here for as long as you remember. We're introduced to a boy donned entirely in the colors of black and white with a black tank top, simply that goes by Amori. And we start off with him going into opening a door from White Space, going into this very colorful and vibrant atmosphere. Uh, this this very like it's it's very obviously like, this one giant playpen, full of ki full of th three other kids, uh, Kel, Aubrey, and Basil, and you know Aubrey is very uh, she's kind of, she's just kind of I think she kind of exudes a little bit of the tomboyish aura to herself. Um, Kel is very much just kind of a headstrong type person. He's very energetic, very kind of childish. And Hiro, while he's older than them, while well, he's still a child and everything, he is definitely like the more mature one and everything. And pretty much they go out and set out into this this vibrant and colorful world where we're introduced to two characters in particular, Basil and Mari. Now, Mari is, um, from the game, is Amori's uh, sister. And she seems to be very kind and very nice. Uh, just sitting there on her picnic basket with food and a picnic uh, and, and just a picnic blanket laid out and everything She seems like a really nice character and Basil is just well. He seems like a passive boy. He's He likes gardening. He likes flowers and he also has like this garden. That's like it, it, every every flower particular garden uh, with a singular flower has like a flower that represents each character like he has some flowers He's got tulips roses for and it's essentially like, you know, this is uh, who I feel uh, best represents this flower He's kind of that kid. So uh, Pretty much the prologue teaches talks is a pretty lengthy tutorial on the game Like it has like hey, we get to fight. This is how the JRPG elements work like we're introduced to emotions where Characters that are happy are more uh, are more likely to be taken down by characters that are sad, or characters that are pissed off are more likely to be screwed over by characters that are angry, or not angry characters that are happy, so on and so forth. It's basically kind of it's it's just the Pokemon JRPG esque style of like strengths and weaknesses. Um, and yeah, for the most part, the prologue is just centered around hey. Here's this colorful, lavish world. Here are the characters. Here's the RPG mechanics and fighting and whatnot. So I think we should uh, want to talk about that for the most part right now. Hmm. Uh, I mean, yeah, we can talk about that. I mean, to start off. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, just to start off. <laughs> I mean, to be fair. I mean, to be fair. I mean, I give the best thing, but I'll do my best. But. When I first came into this, thinking of, okay, seeing this whole vibrant world, seeing these characters, I'm not going to lie. There was this dark part of my mind that was like, all right, how, what's going to happen to them? How bad is it going to be? And all that jazz. But no, seeing all of it, seeing the characters, seeing people like uh, Mari, Hero, Kel and all that, it's like... Okay, I'm I'm invested. I'm curious. Impress me. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest. I have the exact opposite reaction. Hmm. Really? What a beautiful world and what fun mechanics. Let's see how we can burn it all down. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair. <laughs> to be fair, I I, I don't blame you. <laughs> my first reaction. You... Yeah, my first reaction is definitely like. I'm very big on art direction, and like when I was looking at, it, I could tell it was prominent. But personally, it's just like there's that back of mind in the back of my head. It was like it just it looks like a like out of a children's drawing book, and I was just like, there's something about this art that's like it feels very crude, but at the same time, it looks 
well done, but at the same time, it just like feels, for some whatever reason, I was just like, there's something off here. I can't explain it. And I thought, oh, maybe, I, at first I chalked it off to like, oh, maybe it's low budget. I mean, it's an indie game. Maybe they just took pictures of real world and just went, yeah, there we go. <laughs> That's what I thought at first. Uh, it it kind of does feel like that the more you look at it. Yeah. But then um. But then I but then you look further into it. It's like okay, yeah, it's yeah, you can see where it's going with the uh, art design. It's like yeah. yeah, okay. Less of a, less of a, hey, it, it feels less of a budgetary thing and more of a stylistic approach, and I kind of appreciate that. Right. Yeah. So then after all that, we deal with the RPG mechanics. Then we come to. Uh, Basil, who has this big photo album full of like happy, fun time memories with Mari and the others and Omori, and just it's all these it's all these wonderful memories. Like characters, like they're eating watermelon, they're dancing in the rain, and everything. It's just so wonderful. But then a picture falls out of the photo album, and Basil takes a look at it, and it's weird. He doesn't remember what it is. He doesn't remember seeing this, but. It feels weird, and just the happy-go-lucky music just fades out. All of it becomes cold and silent, and Basil seems to have this worried expression just like on my his life. <laughs> Just like your life. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I couldn't resist. You, you put the ball on the tee for me. <laughs> I threw the, I threw the soul ball. You just had to fucking swing. <laughs> Exactly. I just had to rev up that home run swing there. <laughs> you, you set me up. I couldn't not take it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, like everything like just comes to a coral. Basil has his worried expression and he turns to everyone in a and he's like, Mari, she... And then we get one of the real first jump scares out of the game. Where it's just like, it's just, it's... Okay, I want to say, like, what I like about this game is that it's jump scares. Like, it has jump scares, but it doesn't rely on it. Because I feel like... Like, it's... Yeah, like, it's not really in your face with them. Yeah, like, it's not as prominent as, say, like, an Insidious movie. Where it's just, like, that's... It has, like, you know, creepy stuff. But you can very much tell they're putting emphasis on the jump scares. It feels very much like it... It feels like it's building up to something, and the jump scare helps pay it off. Right. Yeah. And it's just like it, it's a very quick image, and like if you, it, it's very much like kind of a if you blink it, you see it, and most likely if you're playing it for the first time, you are gonna miss it. But it's a picture of just like a crushed violin, like a very quick image. And then we come to um. What I would say is the highlight, and personally for me, the highlight of the game, how to wake up from the dream. So, <laughs> yeah, um, so, uh, it, it should be noted that uh, I'm gonna put a content warning here that, yeah, this game deals with themes such as trauma, depression, anxiety, and even suicide. So it should be noted okay, that, um, um <laughs> just like my life. <laughs> Okay, can I, can I uh, make? Uh, can I uh, talk about that for a moment? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so when I first uh, either looked up this game or just went to play it, and I saw that warning, and then I saw the tag like psychological horror and all that jazz. Yeah. I looked at it, it's like, oh, it's gonna be, a, it's gonna be like, uh, it's gonna be another uh, thing like Doki Doki and all that, and so, and then I, and then I saw the option, and I was like, no. So, no, to those, they, they wouldn't. <laughs> so, they to wouldn't. those who don't know, um, the option when you, after you deal with the prologue, you are stuck in white space and you have, like, okay, so white space has, like, a laptop, a box of tissues, a sketchbook, and a cat that will eventually say something, but it'll always say, Are you waiting for something to happen? And you can go around white space as much as you want, but aside from the occasional Easter egg, nothing happens. But, Eventually, if you hit the pause menu and you look, the first option you see is the option to stab. And you get the option, and you're the only one in white space, so you have to stab yourself. And if you do it, Amori just pulls out the knife and stabs himself in the gut. I was like, no, no they wouldn't go that far. <laughs> and they did. Yeah, I, I saw that, and, I, and my first initial was like, Okay, yeah, 
That's the kind of fucked up shit I signed up for. All right, you Just got me. I'm sold. Let's go. <laughs> oh, it's gonna be that type of game, is it? <laughs> <laughs> so, dudes, what do you think of that? <laughs> Yeah, have to excuse me, I'm a little ADHD right now, kind of free-floating in the sea of my psyche. <laughs> I'm, so, you just look like, I'm sorry, he does what with what now? <laughs> I mean, I heard there an option pops up to stab yourself, and I'm like... <laughs> Joke aside, that sounds metal as fuck. I, my, my <laughs> mind immediately went to, okay, I just heard stab yourself, and I stopped listening after that. <laughs> I just blacked out right then and there. So, yeah, um, in this game, in order, if you want to wake up from dreams, you gotta have him or he kill himself. Wow. And it, it, it was, and it was right then and there, I knew... Okay, this is gonna take it seriously. Okay, I got you. We're not, we're not playing there questions. that I knew that I needed to never hear anybody talk about this game. <laughs> uh, and uh, from that, we get uh, a, a recurring thing that happens with the cutscenes is that we get these visions of uh, Amori and Basil just kind of together, and it kind of looks. It, it, it alludes to this whole big mystery. And, you know, it's just like, it has these, like, these pictures, like, you know, just look at all of us having fun, and all the pictures are, like, scribbled out, and, and then it's like, we're gonna make some new memories, and then just the screen just fades away crudely with, like, scribbles and everything. And I, like, it, it just, when I was playing it, it had this, it just instinctively, like, clicked to me, like, this game has something to tell, I don't know what it is, but it's got me hooked. It's like, you want to know what happens next, you want to know what this big mystery is, and you just on the edge of your seat the whole time. Yeah. Alright, and then we lead into the real world at night, where we get to meet our character, which, um... Yes. What was interesting about it is that there's actually I don't I'd have to play the uh, the I'd have to play the console version. I think for the console version I don't know about Switch, but I'm pretty sure for the console version this trophy is available. If you name the character Omo Cat, which is the name of the people who developed this game, it gives you a tr it gives you a trophy. To say, oh, so you think you're clever, huh? <laughs> That's an actual, that, Yeah, like, try it in... Like, if you get the chance to play the game again, try it. It gives you a trophy. And apparently, I think if you use... It, I think if you use it as a code, it gives you, like, 1% off of whatever they're selling. That's actual... That's like a reverse cookie clicker. Yeah. Like, you can name your... You can name yourself in cookie clicker after the creator of the game, and it will take 1% off your cookies per second and give you an achievement. And it'll give you an extra minus 1% if you spell it wrong. Because <laughs> you're usurping. Oh my god. They knew. So, <laughs> they knew what they were doing. They, they knew what they were doing. They did their research. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, you can. this is a part of the game where, yeah, you can name your character wherever you want. You can't name Amori, however, Amori stuck as Amori, but you can name this character wherever you want. But for the sake of it, the game's canon, we're just going to call him by what the game calls him. We're going to call him Sunny. So, you name the character Sunny, you wake up as him in the middle of the night, and, like, Sunny has to, and Sunny is like, it's just Sunny, like, his, his house is just, like, full of cardboard boxes. He gets a message saying, hey, hey, Sonny, it's your mom. Uh, we're going to be moving in a few days. Just make sure you pack things up and take care of everything. Make sure to lock the door. I love you. And, you know, everything, whatnot. And then you, like... Oh, yeah, that's right. Um, Pretty much, like, nothing really happens. Uh, Like, it just kind of feels... you just kind of in the room and whatnot. Then you go back to sleep, but that's not working. And then, like, you decide, oh, actually, wait, I'm hungry. So then Sonny has to go downstairs, 
And here begins um, a big part of the game, dealing with specific phobias. Starting with the staircase. And when you get, like, you open up the door out to your room and you have this dark hallway leading to this giant staircase with a red eerie glow outside so you know typical uh, typical uh, time during the canadian wildfires ah uh, yes obviously clearly <laughs> yep <laughs> <laughs> and uh you walk down the steps and it gets apparent that steps are not ending in fact uh something seems to be creeping in and then just out of nowhere which um I have to wonder, because out of nowhere, just a giant hand comes out and tries to grab Sonny. I have to wonder if that's, like, that's photo, t that's, like, f photoshopped of, like, the creator's hand, and they just put it in there as a, as kind of a horror gimmick. I wouldn't be surprised if they did, but it worked either way. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Fully Cooly, I know Fully Cooly did that for its climax, where it's, like, they had the actual creator's hand rotoscoped. That's interesting. But we get introduced to uh, an interesting gimmick, and what I kind of give credit to, where it's like, they t this game is made with RPG Maker, but they take the RPG elements, and they use it in a very kind of deceptive way, where you are you have to fight, like, what they don't even say the name, they just, it's just titled something. You have to fight a staircase with a face on it. So yeah. Luigi's Mansion. Yeah, you have to fight Luigi's Mansion. <laughs> Mario! And... Mario! <laughs> Mario! <laughs> so, what's interesting about it is that typical JRPG logic really do or RPG logic in general really doesn't work here. You try attacking the something, nothing happens. Instead, it can just attack you. What's interesting is that, like, you know, it has the GR... It, it ha I keep wanting to say JRPG. It has the ro it, it has the RPG element set up. It's got the icon, it's got the bars, it's got everything. And it's just like nothing's working. And out of nowhere, you hear this voice where it's like everything is going to be okay. And it's like you take deep breaths and learn how to calm down. You go into the skills and you find the ability to just calm down. And it works. Like the battle is over. And... I really, like, it really interests me, because I want to say, the first time I played this, I was treating it like a normal RPG. Like, I was thinking, oh, this is a threat I have to face. I gotta attack it. I gotta just come at it. And, like, and I should note, and I should note that as you're going down the steps, there's just a knife on the steps, and you just pick it up, and you get to use it. I mean, basically, you're just kind of cutting stuff in the dark or whatnot, I guess. But... <laughs> And, and it's just like, it, it was interesting. The first time I played it, I failed because I was just treating this like a normal RPG. And then when I learned about the calling down, like, it really interested me because it was like, it plays like an RPG, but it, it, it kind of plays itself off as an RPG, but how it's played is very different. Okay. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it was, uh, yeah, seeing that for the first, yeah, seeing that for myself for the first time, I was like, I... I want to say I saw it something like it before somewhere, but I can't really place my finger on it. Where it would you know, subvert, where it would subvert RPG tropes that you would expect, like fighting some great threat and then just. But I, I'm, to this day, I still can't figure out what it reminded me of. I can't say Lie of the Lion because that recently came out. So. <laughs> I I think I know what you're getting at because like I, I, I again I feel like I've also seen that where it's just like you have the options to either fight or flight and sometimes like the fighting option is not the biggest option like i think at best what is um i think at best like uh all i can think of is like spooky's house of jump scares because there's a and there's an alternate ending to it where if apparently if you're just non-stop attack the final boss and everything just non-stop you go insane with bloodlust and I think that, like that's an alternate ending to it. Okay, yeah, I think if you that play might... Doom, just be like, <laughs> you're in danger. <laughs> I'm in danger. 
<laughs> but yeah. Um, so after all that happens, uh, Sunny goes down to the kitchen, uh, microwaves the steak. Probably should have eaten it, uh, sooner because that steak went bad. <laughs> like, uh, like, uh, Maggie's and everything type bag. <laughs> <laughs> For some reason, immediately my mind popped into like that old clip. I think from I don't know who made it. Thomas Sanders, I think. Where it's just like, hey, can you tell if the milk went bad? He opens the he opens the kitchen door. The milk's got like a, a drawn on goatee and like two rag. Just what? It's just like he closes it. It went bad. I'm now picturing this thing just holding up a gun. <laughs> just a carton of milk. Give me the money. <laughs> Uh, but, but yeah, you can. But yeah, uh, Sonny. I'm yeah, Sonny. Really, uh, yes. Re return that stick to center in the bathroom. Oh uh, yep, turn the season the better. And here comes. Personally, I have to say this is something I have to give full on credit to the game: the encouragement of player choice. Now, like, um, what it, what happens after you throw up the stick in the bathroom? Um, and it's you know what's funny to me is that. You you can ch pick the toilet in the real world, but in the dream world, they got ramen in them. I just kind of find that funny. You can't dig into the toilet in the real world and find ramen. My no. my immersion my immersion is ruined. Game lied to me. <laughs> Game lied. <laughs> but after that, you go out of the you go out of the bathroom, and you hear a knocking on the door. Now. What I like about it is that there is no text dialogue saying like, oh, there's a knocking at the door. Maybe I should go answer it. There is nothing stopping you from avoiding it. It just gives you an audio prompt and that's it. You have the absolute choice to ignore it or go see what it is. I, I love, I personally, I just want to say I love when games do that. I hate when games like, I think like one of the biggest things I can come to mind right now is Persona. Because Persona has those make or break moments where it's just like, hey, if you do this, everything can go, like, you can have a happy life. And then there's always this sex prompt where it's like, if I do this, yeah, I can have a happy life. But if I do this, something bad can also happen. Is this, am I sure I want to do this? You click S. Am I really sure I want to do this? <laughs> and it's like, it kind of feels somewhat like on the low end of like manipulation with player choice. Now, nah, but in but here in Amori, you hear the knock, and then instinct will tell you to just to go to the knock, you know, because it's basically ingrained into your head. But yeah. the option of just going going right back to bed is is right there. Yeah, and to be fair, I mean, it is the middle of the night. You hear a knock in the door, and it's a kid. Instinctively, yeah, like people will be like, "Oh, it's a knock at the door. Maybe I should answer." But also, it's a kid, and it's the middle of the night. Wait, there's a knocking at the door. I should just ignore it and go back to bed. Both are feasible options. Right, right. <laughs> Let's talk about it. Angry. Let's talk <laughs> about it. Because this gives way to um, both the most underplayed and well-executed moment in the game. So, if you go downstairs and you go to the door, you see a flash and it's like, it's Mari and she's at the door. Apparently, she left her keys in the door. It, she didn't leave she didn't bring her keys in and the door is locked and she's like can you open it for me and the game changes perspective and gives you a different look at the house which is actually really interesting i rarely see this with rpg games where it changes camera angle or it, it it twists around the camera to the uh, to where where the actual player is facing and it shows the door and it's like do you want to open the door like, it gives you that option. And it's like, again, I still love how it encourages player choice. And it's like, are you sure you want to do this? And it doesn't really, like, it, it, it doesn't aim it in, like, a good or bad way. It's just like, are you sure? If you click yes, you get a, you get a small opening to outside what looks like a blue thing. And then a one second underplayed jump scare, honestly. I'm going to be honest. Because... There is, like, no real sound that happens, and it's, like, it's mixed in, and, like, there's this, there's, like, this blue blur, and it's just covered in black. It's kind of hard to really tell what it is. 
But then you go into the base, it, not the basement. <laughs> then you go into the bathroom and look in the mirror, and oh god, there's a demon. <laughs> just, <laughs> just, <laughs> just, right there. Right there. Just, <laughs> just right there. It's, it's like Mari, just long necked, long face, hollowed eye, hollow mouth, like just looking oh, at. Oh, so you. um, it's just. Just standing there. Menacingly. Menacingly. <laughs> and, and when you go to check it again, it's gone. Yeah. <laughs> I have to say, like, it did lead to the big mystery, because I had no idea. It's like, what the hell happened to Mari? It did give me questions. Like, what the hell happened to Mari? Why is she just a demon? <laughs> and it just, and it left you, and it left you wanting more. It left you wanting more. <laughs> And it feels so, so like, uh, it, it feels so, like, it feels so jarring because after that, you just go right back to sleep and you go right back to white space in the dream world. Is, and honestly, that would, that makes the, uh, that explain, that would explain the arts, that explains the art style further because, okay, sure, it's all in the I'm head of me. I'm going to put myself on for just a minute. I'm sorry to interrupt. I'm just going to put myself on mute. I've just got something to take care of. Okay, yeah. Alright, go ahead. But, all right, but yeah, it's uh that it, it explains the art style of the dream world because yeah, it's it's inside the head of a of a I wanna say twelve year old, eleven year old kid. Yeah, it's a, it's like it, it very much like it's very like at the very least, like they allude to uh like I think heroes during like college at this point. They, I definitely think uh Aubrey I think might be at the very least like a, a like a freshman in high school. Because she's wearing like a high school yeah, sailor uniform, so I think right, Hank. Kel would be along the lines of a uh, same age or same, so. Same age, yeah, I think so. And then we go to the dream world where um, the whole plot around Basil apparently missing, and they gotta find him. And uh, we get to. I'm gonna be <laughs> honest. I know it's intentional, but I'm gonna say it. The weakest part of the game, and that is the dream world. Like, not necessarily, like, what alludes to later on with the dream world. I mean, like, the whole colorful world and everything. It's kind of, it's, it's, I know it's intentional, but it is weak. That That's fair. That's fair. That's understandable. Yeah. Like, you, you have to go on these whole quests where it's like you go to, like, the junkyard and the whole thing around space. And you have to, like, oh, man, the, the, this captain is, like, he's apparently bedridden and you gotta go find what he need. you gotta go find what he needs and like okay and then like you find what he needs which is his mixtape and then you have to face him in a boss battle you do that and it's just like oh you, you know that you, you helped him out but it's less like oh. and it's like can we go back to the stuff in the real world and then we and then <laughs> yeah and what I found out, apparently some people, I had to look into this, some people actually did this where it's like, they didn't actively, like, try backtracking. They actively, like, went in and, like, explored the other round, and they found, like, other different areas in the dream world. But personally, for me, I was just like, okay, where do I go from here? And it's just like, I, I went backtrack, and I found, uh, the silhouette of Basil, and I just follow it. Everything's gone. Everything's just like everything starts dimmering. Everyone else except Mori is gone, and you get led into like a uh, massive staircase with uh, sheet music and a photo of a happy family. What looks like it to be, and then another jump scare. Something is follow. Is something comes up behind you? I have to say, the first time I did not play this game the first time, but the first time I saw that, I was like, the first time I saw the something, just the floating and the floating eye just i was like okay this is gonna be a jump scare or i'm gonna have to face this let's go so i charged straight at it <laughs> <laughs> you ain't getting the drop on. <laughs> it's just like all right you want to go let's fucking go <laughs> and then it just it just just jump scare so no messaging <laughs> and then yeah again pretty much stab yourself to wake up from the dream <laughs> and then then we come to the make or break uh, choice in the game, where I've actually heard people who played this game who have made, who didn't realize that um, the game had a different story outside of staying inside because they went with that route. 
Is it okay? I'm gonna be completely fair. <laughs> when I got to this, when I got to this point, I I know what they were trying to do with the, with this particular with the uh, with the choice, but I went at it like how I would normally go at it, and I opened the door. <laughs> I don't blame you. Like I and a hundred percent. Like I get anybody. Like I get you know player. Uh, like like when players because I usually do this. Like usually I when game gives me information and I'm introduced with a new uh, interaction. I go okay. Go back into my file cabinet of previous memories in regards to this game. What happened? Oh, this happened. Maybe I should try something different. I get that. I get that. Because like right. the first time you open the door, you get Helmari, which is what she's canonically referred to as. It's like, okay, I'm not going through that again. Let's just not. <laughs> <laughs> There's not really much else to call her. And then you go to the next day and you get, hey, it's me, Kel. I saw the moving sign outside your house. Uh, you want to spend the day? And then you get the option, will you open the door for Kel? And immediately, I can definitely tell, like, there probably will be some people like, oh, God, is he going to be a demon too? No, I don't want to do that. No, no, no. Go back to sleep. <laughs> But before we get any further, let's definitely talk about the shut-in route, because I think, like, because ultimately, like, there are details in here that, again, I've looked into the shut-in route, and it's like, there are people that have actually played it, and there's, like, there's stuff that people do not realize is actually a lot more darker and a lot has a lot more meaning than they give it credit to if you just play the shut-in route. Right. In fact, I think one person that did uh, actually did the uh, shut-in route before opening the door was uh, Nico B. He went through the uh, full uh, shut-in route. Yeah, I know Girl DM, like the VTuber Girl DM, like she tried playing Amori recently, and she was like, "Hey, it's Kel. In the, it, hey, it's Kel. Should we let him in? Wait a minute. This is this is post quarant. This is post quarantine. We shouldn't be letting people in. <laughs> and just closed the door and went the shut-in route." <laughs> I, like, she's still playing the game, so I have yet to wonder if she's actually going to go back and do the real route, or if she's just going to stick with the, uh, shut-in route, but whatever. So, yeah, you shut the door, and you apparently, um, you, uh, you shut the door, and it's like, you hear knocking at the door, but nothing, you can't really go back and go look into it. So you just go back to sleep, and then pretty much for the rest of the day, you're left just doing chores, and pretty much, um... Okay, so this happens in both routes, but I kind of want to save it for when we talk about the reunion route, because I think it's more... I think it's better shown on that. And that is the different right. phobias. So, let's save that for the the other route. Alright. So, yeah, you deal with the phobias, um, and then afterwards, you just kind of go back into sleep after just taking care of the house, just getting ready to move, and... You open the door, and or just go back into white space, open the door... And now this time, instead of going to uh, go into outer space and go into junkyard, this time you get to go deal with Sweetheart's uh, bachelor bachelor uh, at reality TV show contest, or whatever. Uh, goody. <laughs> this okay? I know I'm not gonna be alone in this, and I know I'm gonna talk. I know it's gonna sound like I'm talking facts, but I'm gonna say this for everyone here. This is the most dragged on part of the game. Yeah, I ain't, I ain't defending that one whatsoever. Oh god. It's it's one thing to have like the whole like oh like which 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 uh which of these ceilings and a hero in a ceiling mask is going to be sweetheart's uh new boyfriend or whatever. Like, I get that, and, like, you know, it would have been fine if it just went, like, you know, hero declining it, and then they go, wait, if uh, if I can't have you, no one can, and then they just go to the fight. I would have... But it just... Oh, God, But it just it goes, kept going on. On and on. on. <laughs> and in the lens of the shut-in route, you know, it is definitely... In the lens of the shut-in route, it is like that, yeah, you're going through the dream world, you have to learn more about this world. I get that, but as someone who did not want to play the shut-in route, oh god, it just dragged on. No. Um, I will give it one thing. Mm -hmm. One thing. The song World's End Valentine. That's a pretty good song. I, I will admit, that's a pretty good song. The music, okay, I, can we just say this? The music is really well done. The music. Oh, yes, it is. Like, it goes from, like, 
the traditional like really good compo compositions of RPG music and everything and then it has those real surreal tracks like the phobia tracks which I found out if you speed them up like five times they make a pretty banger track like, Alright, I can tell me trying that next time I listen. Yeah, like, look this up. Someone made a Porter Robinson and Omori mashup with the phobias, and it actually slaps. <laughs> well, alright then. I but, know what I'll be doing later tonight. <laughs> but yeah, it's just this whole thing around this this cliche anime or anime rich girl all ho 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 kind of character where you have to bake a cake for her you have to deal with this family of seedlings that come after you and then you gotta deal with so it drags on and on and on it's so goddamn tedious i get why they're doing it when you do the shut in route but it does not change the fact it just drags on it's and like, oh god, I forgot because it's yeah. Come back, by the way. No, hey, welcome back. Yeah, it, it, it's this is related to because it actually ties this ties in together. I forgot to talk about the junkyard route. Uh, one of the one of the worst like actual bosses in the game, next to the final boss, and in the dream world, the Windows ninety five <laughs> loading screen. Oh god. <laughs> I'm not kidding! At some point, you have to go chase down, like, this seedling who has a mixtape, and it's like, don't come any closer. You cross a line, and the game just freezes, and it pops up this actual old progress bar of now loading, and you gotta fight that. It's funny, and at the same time, it's, it's funny and also harsh at the same time to deal with. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I will give them this. They are creative in their boss fight. Yeah. <laughs> Would you expect to fight a Windows pop-up as a boss? I did not expect a demo for revival items from a um, discount Kool-Aid man to be that fun and endearing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they have a discount Kool-Aid man selling you revival items. <laughs> To show you the to show you the power of life, champ. I'm gonna kick your ass. <laughs> <laughs> to show you well, the I mean... power of life, jam. I cut your life in half. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> That's not how this works. <laughs> and repaired it only using life, jam. <laughs> So, they say you're, when they take your toast to the next level. I also have to give credit that I love that that uh, that idiom that 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 collo that collective idiom is n actual taken literal in this. Like the line "He's toast" turns in like if you KO in this game, you turn to actual toast. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> pretty good yeah but yeah pretty much we deal with sweetheart um afterwards she's beaten captain spacex boyfriend comes crashing out confesses her love to her and uh yeah they go off and then we get to part two of the something which i'm not gonna it's lie it, it's it's filled with like i like the little details and hints I like the little details in this. Which, speaking of which, I haven't even talked about the spider, the spider forest, which uh, was actually really interesting with Daddy Long Legs. Like, it, it it's kind of that whole. It, it really like, although I don't really think it matters much in the shut-in route because like, it, it it feels very much like this is intended for if you go down the good route, because right. it, it like it feels like it's leading up to something big. But in the shut-in route, it feels very much like it doesn't matter. Okay. I, right, cause yeah, cause, I, ironically, um, the detour of the Swear Castle feels more of what it builds up to in the shut-in route, whereas the, the whole thing with the spiders feels more like a detour in this route. And it's like, with the good route, it's vice versa. Like, perfect. But yeah. Yeah, well, 
yeah, I can get to, uh, yeah, I can get further into the whole uh, message when we get to the reunion route. Yeah, but, yeah, uh, yeah. I, I, I kind of wanted to save all that, but I just wanted to allude because I'm going in chronological order here. Right. Uh, yeah, but after that, uh, we get to the library filled with like little details, stuff that I actually had to look into because like I just saw, oh, it's a library, interesting, and it's like it's dark and it has all these flowers that represent, you know, messages of like people who will follow you into your dreams and whatnot. And that's in it has both this like this heartwarming and yet kind of morbid feeling to it, and it's I don't know, it's just like it's really interesting, especially like this somber piano track that plays and it will and it follows you throughout most of uh, if not all the entire game yeah it is um and then we get to uh something it's been happening throughout the game since uh the prologue started and we got to the day, day one but we get to the whole thing of black keys which leads to uh hangman route now Shut and wise, I should note that um, all it leads to is a particular instance in the official game, which I am going to be, or the other route, which I am going to be talking about because they're both connected, but they lead to different routes. But right. the Black Keys lead to a specific game of Hangman. And if you play oh. through the game and you get all of the keys, uh, the game freezes, shows that the Hangman game is completed, you get a glimpse of the something, and it crashes, and you can't go back to the Hangman game. In fact, like, the Heyman is just erased. A played game. But, uh... Yeah. It is... It, the more you, uh... The more it does, I figured it was gonna... I honestly should have seen it when it was... Doing the Hangman game, I just figured, oh, okay, it's gonna be a, it's yeah. it's just a friendly game of Hangman. It's yeah. never that simple. Yeah, it's I, never that simple. It's never that simple. Like, th so there's like there's a lot of like subtle imagery and just detail here that's intentional in the game, except when it's not. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, we get to the library, we go through the path, and we find Basil, uh, but he's looking at something again. And then we get, and then it just cuts to one day left, or not two, not or not one day left, like yeah, one day left. Totally. One day left. No, 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 no. Wait, wait, wait. It's, it's two days left because one day I'm getting ahead of myself. It's two days left because right. Kel just entered the door. So, uh, two days left. Shut and wrap. Just sweep around. Um, you take a bath and you wake up at night. Uh, of course, you have to deal with the phobia then, but we're gonna deal with that later. Take a bath. You wake up and you go into the dream again. And this time around, um, you deal with, okay, ultimately, um, this is where the dream really starts to break down and become a lot more, uh, deceptive, and I will say it becomes a lot more darker. Starting with Mr. Jossum. Have to say, honestly, that, that whole part, uh... Actually, the music for that kind of slaps. No, yeah, it, it, it does. Like, I, I was, I was jamming out in my seat the entire time. <laughs> just Kel winning at, just Kel winning and losing at the slot machines. <laughs> yeah. Perfectly normal. <laughs> I do have to say, like the idea of it being a casino filled with gators and the leader being a shark, like gators and sharks are fucking scary, and like. <sighs> Like, the, the whole thing with the casino, yeah, it's like these flashing and lights and happy-go-lucky and makes you feel nice, but it's also a casino where you're gambling. And, like, I really like how it ties into the fact of, like, this being very deceptive. Yeah. And then there's uh, the whole thing with Hero working for uh, Jawsome. <laughs> working for Jawsome. <laughs> Being a, just being a model employee. <laughs> just being a model employee. <laughs> uh, yeah. Then we deal with a uh, Pluto boss fight, which um, I'm not gonna lie. Next to uh, the the final boss, the final final boss fight in the dream world is actually one of the more harder ones. I wasn't I wasn't expecting much when I saw Pluto for the first time, and then he just gets super swole, and I'm like, "Well, okay, all right, why didn't you?" Start? Oh, Pluto is not a planet. Guess what, fucker? 
<laughs> it's like, it's like, a Pluto's not a what? <laughs> <laughs> Why'd you say that to my face? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I did. Ha I I think I died like uh, I think like twice to Pluto. <laughs> to I, Super I, Pluto. I managed by the skin of my teeth. I died like once or twice to Mr. Dawson, but I managed by the skin of my teeth to Pluto. Maybe that's because I like. I don't know, maybe it's because I got used to the whole emotion system and everything, but I don't know, maybe it's just because I played it safe. I don't know. It's fair. But, uh, yeah, after all... Yeah, after all of that, yeah. And, uh... I think I... Then we get to, uh, one of the more interesting parts of the game. Uh... So, like, the characters ask, um... Yeah, what, what are we supposed to be doing again? Yeah, they, um, yep. I noticed that they kind of forgot that they're looking for Basil. Then when they try to remember, it's like, does, uh, anybody remember what Basil looks like? And it ain't just the name either, they completely they, forgot him. They forgot how he looks like. And then we go <laughs> further down into the, and further down to the well, we go further down, and then we find, uh, well, first, we find, a uh, Flower Crown. It belongs to someone. And it's like, oh, well, and Aubrey and everyone else is like, oh, well, it must belong to someone, so we gotta return it. What does Kel do? He just fucking kicks it. <laughs> He's like, eh. <laughs> Doesn't belong to anyone, fuck it. <laughs> so why should we kick? Why did they jump for me recently? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, but yes, uh, oh, oh, yeah, that's right. Humphrey. Humphrey. Ooh, also known as uh, this game's version of Moby Dick. <laughs> it's just you can to the extreme. Yeah, this, if the casino is, if the casino was like, uh, if this casino was like, you know, subvertedly like deceptive and whatnot. Oh boy, Humphrey. So you meet Humphrey. Humphrey is like, oh well, I might have seen your friend. I think, he f but uh, who cares about that? It's kind of fun here. Why don't you hop inside my mouth and we'll have a fun time? It's like this man's trying to eat us. <laughs> just there's no, there's no way out of it. You gotta go into Humphrey's mouth. And it's just, it's, and it just despises out of control from it there. It gets worse the more you think about it, cause like, oh, okay. Let's. I just want to say this right now. The chapter of Humphrey, aka if if also known as if Sweetheart had paid her clams, we wouldn't have been. We wouldn't have gotten into this situation. It all just comes back to Sweetheart. Which I should note. I actually did. I did some searching into this place before, like I went to Humphrey. But um, I went to a cafe or I went to a restaurant into the Dream World. And SpaceX boyfriend is playing a song, and apparently, uh, yeah, that whole thing with sweetheart and space boyfriend being in love that lasts for about five minutes. And you just, <laughs> uh, and when I saw that, when I saw he was there and that whole thing, I just, in my mind, was that whole plankton spiel about but we've did every single thing i followed all the <laughs> every single thing to the letter I, I think i blew my top right then and there <laughs> but it was one of the few things that legitimately pissed me off <laughs> yeah <laughs> i'm not gonna lie it was like holy shit and it gets worse with the sweetheart. So in this, like, pretty much we explore the, uh, we explore Humphrey and his acidic filled routes and whatnot. Stomach acid filled routes and everything. Uh, and, like, this, like, it's filled with a lot of things. For one, uh, the, one of the more aggravating parts out of the game, the monster cat. So in this, yeah. there's like there is a uh, there is a make or break moment where you have to run for your life, and if you don't do it, you have to start at the beginning. And there's this. So initially, I, I'm a fucking idiot. I should note that. <laughs> <laughs> I came across the monster cat, and it was like exper. It was like I saw it. I clicked on it, and it was just the glass broke, and he ate me. 
no 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 it's it, it it gets even worse you're doing great you're in the middle of your run and you think you got it but then you made one mistake one simple mistake you talk to the spelling bee Or, 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 no, no, you made one mistake. You didn't hit the right taste bud on Humphrey. <laughs> and you gotta go oh. back, and the cat's right there! <laughs> it's just, it's just, it's still just, it, it'll never, it'll never be as, it'll never be as bad as the, uh, as the spelling bee. Okay. So slow, and, and, and it was, and you know... You know it was all on purpose, too. Oh, yeah, 100%. You know it was on purpose. <laughs> oh, man. And then, it like... Just made, it, it just made the hot dog all the more satisfying. Oh, yeah. Monster Cat gets killed by a hot dog. <laughs> hot dog. <laughs> Which you can actually... I think... If I recall, couldn't you just collect it? I don't know. I never tried. I, I was still on that organ. I was still on that orgasmic high from killing from the monster. Right now. <laughs> I think I tried it. Where I was just like going, like, okay, is it like gonna make me a mess? Where it's like, you got hot dog, and it's just like giant monster size, like, w like Winnebago style hot dog, just fits into a boy's pocket. Is like, you got hot dog? Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> and from then on, it's like, Thanks for my average lunch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah from then on it's pretty much every pathway like you deal with puzzles and whatnot every pathway leads to sweetheart talking to slime girls trying to make the perfect mate the narcissist as she is and like it, gets, it gets worse and worse every time you get the mutant one you get like the slime you get the robot one and then you get like the perfect heart and she's like well, it's perfect, but I feel like it's, like, too perfect, and it's not really my taste. Screw you, girls. You did horribly. You didn't feel my expectations, and she goes off. I just wanted to reach into that screen and slap the shit out of her. <laughs> oh, yeah. I I'm so glad they did what they did with her in the end. Like, after you get all the cards, you go to you go down to Humphrey, and then Slime Girls, like, they, they stop her. And they, and they, and, and what does we have to say? Well, I mean, if you want your payment, those kids can pay up. And then she runs off. Humphrey just eats her. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> I, that's it. That's it. I, I even tried looking into the shut-in route. No, that's it. That's it. That's, she's done. She's Never just gone. Again. <laughs> and it's like, oh yeah, it should, it should, it might, it might not surprise you, but yeah, Sweetheart had no money on her. No glance. And it's like, because of course, yeah. And then, the slime girls are like, well, she did say that the kids can pay it. Well, if you don't have the money to pay it, you can pay us with your bodies. <laughs> I didn't adopt. Which, um, we are adults. <laughs> which, on one hand, um, it gets kind of worse when you consider that all of them are kids. On the other hand, uh, when you consider the fact that this is Sunny's dream world. There's something he wants. He's something he's not telling us. Like, is there you, some sort uh, of like a Jessica Rabbit moment there? <laughs> so you, uh, something you want? To, uh, do you want something you want to tell us there, Sonny? <laughs> any, uh, any uh, professor drama you got there? Did you go on Rule Thirty Four on DeviantArt, Sonny? <laughs> what? What's someone else is gonna do in that room all by himself? Shut in. He's just shut in. It's, it's not like he lives with, like, no women whatsoever. There is no chance whatsoever that he's not beating it. He's got a computer. He's got the internet. He plays blackjack all day. Oh, God. <laughs> so, we get to the Slime Girls, which, I'm not gonna lie, um, kind of an easy battle, but at the same time, also not, because it's, like, just... I, I died a few times to that, and I also had to go back and grind for it. Yep. But yeah, that's... Uh, uh, but let's get to the main attraction, which I'm pretty sure a lot of people want to talk about. Um, waiting for us to talk about... Humphrey! So, um, I'm yeah! Not... Humphrey eats clams, and he's getting hungry, and uh, nobody's got clams to spare, so if he doesn't get clams, uh... He eats Guess the what? slime You're on... girls. You're on the menu. You're on the menu. And the floor. Oh my god. It's just. 
it actually creeped me out with this part where it's just the floor under the slime girls caves in and inside you see hundreds of Humphreys. Oh god. It's like a movie no, I got, theater I, in there. I got chills seeing that. Oh yeah. And then the fight itself. It just it made it up. worse. And I, I, I had to look this up because I knew I wasn't alone. Apparently, I did. I thought this was supposed to be an unintentional lose battle. Because nope. Because it goes on and on and <laughs> on. If you don't beat it, oh god, it did. I had to go back yeah. and grind more and more until I could finally get it. And then, um, at some point, it just stops and we get into his uvula. And we come to the point where I think everybody, rightfully so, was thinking, Oh god, we're at like 1 HP, we got- we have like no health and we gotta deal- come on. One attack with Amori. Congratulations, you win! Wait, wait, what? <laughs> yeah! After all that time, you cut the usual, and oh god, that, that's it. <laughs> you put us, you put us through all that, and then you're just done. Yep. <laughs> it's like I, I should note that the levels for Amori, oh god, they're like they're really disorienting because like at, at certain point, I really feel like they're like drawn at some point, but at some point, they just become like. Photos of like real images of a mouth, like the like the like I feel like someone took a pictures of like the walls of a mouth and then just a uh, mouth just opening and closing in an actual uvula. Like it's really fucking jarring. Like I I, I gotta give credit where it's like it's very disorienting. Yeah, they knew what they were going. They wanted to go for, and I applaud them for it. I was thoroughly creeped out the whole time. Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. Uh, I, I, well, we haven't come back to you, dude, so, like, what do you think after hearing all that? That's pretty fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> See? Perfect opinions right there. That, that, you're doing great, dude. You're doing great. <laughs> uh, and then we come to a point where, all right, I'm gonna be honest here. Um, initially, I had gotten all the keys I needed. Which, um, if you play the Hangman game and get the right keys before the Hangman game is over, which is very possible if you don't go past the black space. Uh, if, if you actually get past the black space and whatnot. But, um, it, the keys say welcome to black space, where a hole in Basil's, Basil's home, which has been pretty much left to rot and, and just left and forgotten, yeah. opens up and you get a pathway to, uh, a pathway to... Mari, who's just sitting there, a quick jump scare, and a black door. Which I'm gonna talk- And it's here. Well, I'm gonna- I We want, get in- I want- I'm gonna get that out real quick, but I want to talk about something. <laughs> I did not realize that you could go straight towards, uh, back to the playroom and find the rest of the keys and go back to Basil through the whirlpool that Humphrey creates. Because I went back the long way. I knew where I had to go. I did not see the cutscene where you're just floating upstream and get to this message where it's like you have to, where it's telling you you need the necessary keys to get there. So I what just went to Black Space without seeing that. But yeah, let's get to Black Space, aka the love letter to Yume Nikki. Basically, the meat and potatoes of this entire game. <laughs> yep. Like. The thing, like, I, I looked at the trailer and I was wondering, when are we going to get to that? This is when we get to that. Oh, man. Black Space. Oh, God. Um, I gotta start somewhere, so I guess we should start with, uh... Let's just... If you decide to, if you decide to play this game, play it with the lights on, especially when you get to Black Space. <laughs> yeah. Um... Yeah, I should notice, I, I, I am going to put a notice that, yeah, um, when we were talking about depression and trauma and anxiety and suicide, yeah, this is where it comes into play. So there's, um, I feel like there is an order, at least, like, I don't know if there's, like, an order to how doors can be opened, but there's definitely, I think there's somewhat of an order, but I'm going to try and recall it to the best of my intentions. Uh, so some doors, like, you walk around and you have, like, these crude drawings of, like, towns and everything, and you have, uh... Stranger, which is the, uh, the, the silhouette of Basil, just
just go around and saying like, you know, we used to be friends, we used to play here together, like there's some down, somewhere down the line everything went wrong. And it seems really creepy and everything, but it feels like, you know, it's leading on to something. And then you got doors like, uh, the red door. Not necessarily the red, red door, but like the red door where you open up and it's just red mirrors. And it's just like, glitching out music. Hell, Maris. Hey, just, I want to go home, please. Yeah. Oh, no. I didn't even bother to check the mirrors. I just clicked the key and left. I didn't realize. And then, no, um, you just did one. Oh, I should note because I didn't actually see this because I played this game like kind of in one setting. Um, apparently, this game, if you get to this point in the black space, uh, if you go to the tile card, the title is different because it goes from a white void with a mori to a black void and just. This alarming, like, underground alarm going off. One day left, you have this, sh you have this, like, shrill, viol you have this shrill shrieking sound, like, gases going off, and just red everywhere. And Omori and Sunny yeah. shifting between each other. <laughs> I, I, I honestly like to say is that, um, for the atmosphere of Black Space, it really gives out the vibe that something is very wrong. And then, when it came to, um, when it came to, like, the one day left thing, like, it kind of felt like, I, I wasn't really sure of how to make about it, but when I got, when I looked at the tile screen, I was like, oh god, there is something wrong here. But, um, before we talk about that, before we, because I'm getting too into the actual, like, reunion round and everything, before we talk about that, let's talk more about the doors, also known as, um, the infamous door known as, I didn't know I had a choice here. <laughs> Can you yep. get Arashi, can you guess what I'm talking about? Yep. 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 He was a good kitty. He was a good kitty. He was a good kitty. I'm not gonna lie, I did it. I did it the first time around because I didn't realize you could get out of the fucking dream. I, I I would not. I refused. I did not. I would not. I tried Dude, everything that you I'm gonna out. say, um, I'm gonna give you. Th I I'm gonna say like a uh, take like a minute to mute if you really don't want to hear this because I know you got cats. Take like a minute if you really don't want to hear this to just mute. And I'm gonna say this as quickly as possible, and then come back in a minute if you really want to. All right, he's good. go ahead. I'm gonna deafen in three, two, one. Okay, okay, so before she comes back and before we spoil her, um, there's a room where it's like Miwoo has been very, very bad. There's a butler and you get a key and you, and like Miwoo's strapped to a table where it's just like, you see Miwoo, do you want to cut open Miwoo? And it gives you the option every single time and it gets worse and worse where Miwoo is struggling and crying for dear life. You want to cut Miwoo open and oh God, you can cut him open. You get nothing from it and then a little die realized around five minutes of stringing around the room. Oh, you can pause yourself and stab yourself and get out of the dream. Oh god, I hate it. I like, and you know, I have to say, like, I honestly, th I, like, there's a number of different interpretations for that, and I have to admit, like, um, I think the cutting, uh, cutting it open is intention was intentional there. Like, it, it's, yeah. it's kind of along with Black Space, where it's like, you don't want to go into it, but uh, it's there. Oh, God. It's like, and, you do, and, when it, and when you do it, you just feel like a piece of shit afterwards. Oh, yeah, 100%. Oh, God. And, like, there is no, there is no, like, happy ending either way. Like, you go one way, congratulations, you're a monster. You go the other way, congratulations, you're suicidal. <sighs> At least I didn't cut the cat open. <laughs> All right. uh, I'm gonna tell him, like... Alright, let's just move on. Yep, yep, okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I sent the message. Yep. Yeah. Alright. <laughs> okay, so, after that... <laughs> after all that, okay. <laughs> let's get away from that horrible moment and talk about more horrible moments, such as Basil. <laughs> The Let's talk of the best of Basil. So the first room I went into, we got, we give, uh, the we find the flower crown, and we give the flower crown back to Basil, 
and we're just going around cracking melons because melons have like rooms get melons give like items in this game and whatnot we're cracking melons and at some point basil gets crushed like a melon out of nowhere and then you crack a melon and then it gives you a key <laughs> second door the elevator you meet Basil, you go down to the elevator and you decide to go home. And uh, it goes on for a while. Basil's like, so um, there's been something in my mind. Can I talk to you about it? Elevator reaches its floor. You go out. Basil's head is stuck in between the doors and it gets severed. Yeah, it's it, it, you notice it's and just from like this door onwards. You notice a pattern. Yeah, and it every be, time, every time Sonny has to say something, he dies. <laughs> it's like he wants to tell some big truth, but you just refuse to hear it. Yeah, it's like in, it, it comes more apparent. Omori kind of feels like it, Omori kind of doesn't want to hear it and takes it to a literal, essential feeling there by killing up Basil. Third door, the spiders. I kind of at first I thought you know it looked disorienting, but I kind of thought they were going to do something different because it was like ah oh, well you know spiders they, people are afraid of spiders, but actually spiders are only uh, defensive when they when they feel attacked. They're actually really friendly. And he's like, oh, they're spiders. Ah, oh, don't worry, I'm your friend. Spiders start crawling more and more and more on Basil until they eat him whole. Oh, boy. And then the next door. Uh, the raft. Which is like... I have to admit, in some ways, darkly humor humorously, kind of the funniest one. Because it, it like it was creatively graphic the first few times. The melon, the elevator, and the spiders. What does this have? You have a trip with Amori and Sunny on a raft, and Amori's like or, or Sunny's like, uh or not Sunny, like our Basil is on a raft, and Basil's like, uh, I have something to say. Go through that tunnel. Basil comes out with no head. Just they're just so sitting there, so sudden. Sitting there. That's it. You, you try to do it, it again. Sitting there. That's it. <laughs> it's, there was no, uh, there wasn't any, there was no indication that it happened. <laughs> and aside from that, I do want to note there is one room I haven't talked about, which is the beach room. Which I think is like, honestly, out of them, quite the more interesting and honestly kind of more disturbing because it's like, it feels, aside from the actual really disturbing one, it feels very like calm and like mellow. Like you're on a beach and like this track playing, it's just like, it, it, it just kind of feels very like off compared to everything else. And uh, then we get to the last door, which um, I know that there are some people who just didn't do it. They got the red door and they went into it, but there's the last door. Which is the most, uh, fucked up one of all. Jeez. Basil and Omori, they go and they're like, they have this, they're back in the dream world, the music's playing again, and they're going to find Kel, Aubrey, and Hero. And Basil goes to talk to them. What do they do? They, Kel, like, um, Hero has a whistle. Kel starts throwing rocks at Basil. Basil gets under the park bench. Aubrey pulls out a bat and smashes her head. And, oh god, I looked at the portrait's hollow, sunken eyes and smiles. Let's play again, Helmori. <laughs> Man, Aubrey gets to do everything. <laughs> just, oh. I just... I think it was, like, after the whole of black space i put the controller down i was like what the fuck i, I literally screamed after looking at all of that what the fuck is happening what does this all mean like i, sh I should note 
that, um, so I, I should note that through the entirety of the game, I was going like, okay, I was trying to theorize what is actually the major secret here. I was trying to think there's gotta be some Machiavellian scheme here. When in actuality, I was like, I was playing four dimensional chess when the game was playing regular chess. The answer was more simple than I gave it credit for, but we'll talk about that it, when we get to it. Yep. After all that, we get to Red Door, and we get to the church and the scene with Basil. Now, I should note that in the shut-in route, this is where the game very differs. Because in the shut-in route, Stranger appears w behind Amori and wakes Sunny up from the dream and essentially torments Sunny with the reality of what he's been hiding and what he's been running away from. And from then, like, nothing he can do works. It's basically a prelude to what happens later. Nothing he can do works. He tries attacking, and that doesn't seem to work. And eventually, he gets to the point where he's like 1 HP. And he's in the red space. And he just tries going further and further. But there's like this well of eyes that just close in further and further and start harming Sunny more and more. To the point where he comes across a Mori just sitting on a throne. And he, like, Amori just switches out for Sunny. The battle ends, and Stranger says, So, you choose to live this way of life, but I wonder if you can call that actually living. And from then on, pretty much, uh, Stranger disappears, and Basil and, uh, Basil and Amori go off into the distance, into space where you get this kind of out of tune creepy music box theme playing where everyone's in beds and everything is happy and then you go back to sleep with everyone and it's like it's just everything is so happy and fun you wake up and there's one day left and then like there's it's just the same stuff you just clean and whatnot but when you go back to sleep Sonny is just surrounded by the eyes the something that he's been haunted by and then out of nowhere, like just Amori reaches out and grabs his hand, and then just completely and utterly takes over. And thus, you become a full shut in. Full shut in, and then there's other stuff to do, like the. There's other stuff to do in the game, but it's all in the dream world, and from then on, pretty much, uh, you can kind of wake up, and then just. It's moving day. And what was interesting is I actually had to find this out. There are two endings to this game, to this route. I thought there was only one. So the first route is the most notably, I think everyone went for it, was um, pretty much... What's interesting about this is that everyone in this, like the movers and everything, are barely visible. Like, you can barely see that at all. But, and you go outside, and there's that something that's been haunting you since the beginning of the game and now it's just traveling with you as you get into the car and move and the credits roll as you hear an ambulance siren like so many questions unanswered and just that just brings even more questions why is there an ambulance siren the second ending you can apparently in the real world on moving day stab yourself with the knife have Sunny stab himself and yep. the ending goes with the like, phone that's ringing. That's how it feels to move. Wait, what? That's just how it feels to move to a new place. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's fair. You, yeah, you that's start fair. packing up your kitchenware, you go, hmm, would it be more or less inconvenient to just <laughs> end it? I could carry all these boxes upstairs, or I could just end it here. Hmm. Why am I up here? <laughs> but yeah, the what's interesting about that ending is definitely like the phone rings, and then there's that well of eyes just looking down at you. All right, so that's a shut-in route. So let's get to the route. Um, pretty much, if you have a, if you if you want to actually sleep right at night, you'll go with this route normally. The actual routine route. So, go back to Kel, get the chance to open the door, 
And pretty much, uh, yeah, you decide to hang out with him. You go to the park. Apparently some kids are picking on Basil. And then there's Aubrey, who has her hair dyed pink with a, with just this high school getup and a bat with nails. And uh, she's like, yeah, if you want to if you want to stop us, you're going to have to get through me. And um, here comes uh, what I like to call the reality check, because you, it treats it like an RPG with the battle system and everything. But Sonny has an actual knife on him. He cuts Aubrey. Now, in the real world, if you take a knife and cut someone with them, they're either going to do one of two things. They're either going to writhe in pain, or they're going to either be a masochist. Aubrey chooses the former. <laughs> <laughs> Aubrey chooses the former. I was former. expecting the latter. <laughs> and you stab Aubrey, and she's like, What the f- What do you have a knife? And she's just bleeding, and it's just like, and it's in that moment you realize, realize oh god oh, sh We're not, this, this is real this, this is this isn't a game you're playing sunny's life <laughs> and but i but i like that it was the i like yeah. that one i like yeah sled, hitting me like a sledgehammer he's like oh oh shit that's right this oh, is yeah, this, this is, is this real be, uh, <laughs> and from then on pretty much it's just a search for aubrey and the photo album and you get to have and go into the ch and after a certain point where you talk to kids go to a church kel has a talk with aubrey and it's just like it, it's it really alludes to like this whole big thing where it's just like they do state that mari is dead and it's like aubrey's taken it very personally and then they have this fight out in the church aubrey's looked to be like a terrible person and they allude to like you know ever since her dad left she hasn't been the same and hey, the way, screw the people of the church. Yeah. Yeah. It's just that there's a lot to take in with that. Yep. <laughs> and, I mean, just. Uh, after that, she dumps the photo album in the trash. You pick it up and give it back to Basil. And you go put the pictures and whatnot. Basil, Kel, and Mori decide. Or not Mori. Sunny decide, decide to have uh, dinner. Kel lets it slip that, well, it's, uh, I mean, you enjoy it while it lasts, because, I mean, I guess, uh, you're gonna be leaving in, uh, three days. And Forrest was like, oh, I, uh, I didn't know you were gonna be leaving. Huh, um, can I go to the bathroom? Uh, and, as we can see when we go into the bathroom, yeah. Basil is taking it. He's doing fine, just saying everything's gonna be okay, um, and just... Like he he he's having delusions. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, good on you, buddy. Yeah, you're doing fine. Uh, you got no oh, choice. Oh, uh, those uh, are those shadows hanging around your feet. Damn, yeah, that's, that's, that's I'm sure fine. It's fine. Is that, a <sighs> is that a disembodied eye with uh, tentacles on it? Oh, um, that, that's fine. That's, that's fine. So I'm gonna just grab these tissues and go. Yeah. And, uh, pretty much we get to the rest of the phobias, uh, the second one, of course, being the arachnophobia, which is the fear of spiders. Uh, you come home, you come home, and the house is filled with spiders, and you get a knife, and you just cut open the webs, and, uh, I gotta say, this is one, this is, like, it really gets down the whole really creepy crawly feeling, because it's like the sound with it, it really feels like something is just like walking behind you, and it feels like there are, and like with the legs just poking Sunny, and just the face on the spider. Oh, I, 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 I won't lie. I did think of uh, Omega Flyway when I saw that. <laughs> uh, and it's just like, and I do like how, um, like in the real world, those phobias and everything, like the battles. Like, the phobia battles can't be won through attacking. You gotta win them through, like, other means. Like, calming down and focusing. After that... Right. And... After that, you get to the dream. We already talked about this. We are, so on and so forth. Um, yep. Then we get to day two, where... Um, where Sunny and Kel are gonna be hanging out again. And this time, they're just gonna... They're, this time, they're preparing for Hero to come home. And they go to the park... After getting after getting food and everything ready, they go to the park and they hear a cry. And apparently, it's at their old hangout. And apparently, Basil's being bullied by Aubrey and her friends over at the group. So you fight them, 
and Aubrey's just freaking out because she's like, why the hell did you come back? Why is why is everything going to shit? And she's pissed off at Basil. So she accident she pushes him by accident into the lake. And, and oh, we did like this because Sonny, despite having his fear of water, dives in after him. Dives in after him. In the, I think the shut-in route, which uh, in the shut-in route, pretty much, he falls asleep in the bathtub. And then the toaster falls in. <laughs> uh, you know, considering this game, I wouldn't put it past him. <laughs> <laughs> All according to plan. <laughs> if toaster was a weapon, it probably would have happened. <laughs> but, yeah, like, from that, he dives in, and then he follow, and then this phobia... Uh, the fear of the, the fear of water, and, or fear of drowning specifically. Uh, he f he follows Mari, and then it's just like he just kneels over, and then just everything becomes a face, and then it's just like you have to you have to fight that phobia, and then we get a cutscene alluding to like just Sunny drowning, and then what looks like to be Mari actually jumping in and saving him, and then it was revealed to be Hero. Hey, he's back. And you save both Basil and Sonny. And then we get to pretty much like Aubrey is pretty much just freaked out and she's having a bad day, so she goes off on her own. Hero and Ke Hero and Kel take Basil home, and he, pretty much they decide, hey, uh, why don't we sleep over at Sonny's place? And Hero goes into the piano room, a place that Sonny has been avoiding this entire time. And they allude to, like, yeah, you know, it's just, like, you and Mari, like, you used to play a lot all together and whatnot. She loved the piano. It's like, and she's like, what was that song that she used to play? And then you click on the piano. It's like, the word Amori is etched across the center. So, I want to note that because I opened the door for Mari, I think this is, like, if you don't do it, like, you don't get this jump scare. But it's like, as soon as I did that... I heard the faint piano, I went to the bathroom, and I checked there was Harold Mari. Apparently other people got, like, uh, just the, I think the disembodied eye with tentacles instead. Yeah, they, they just got the, uh, mostly got the something. Yeah, something. And then I just got Hell Mari. And I thought that was a pretty good jump scare, actually. So, they all decide, you know, uh, Hero, Kill, and Sonya decide to sleep in one room. And then we get to that whole thing with Humphrey and everything. Uh, but this time, unlike with uh, the shut-in route, where it's basically in the shut-in route, you go and fall asleep, you wake up, and Kel's there, and it's basically like, you get to go to the well and just go down. In this route, you find Mari, and you go down this long path, where together with her, to the point where she goes off on her own, and she gives her words of farewell. And, yeah, and it's just like everything else pretty much plays the same from then on. <laughs> and then you go to black space and everything and then everything like that plays the same I'm not gonna go through that again i don't think we need to talk about it again no we don't need to go then through that go heartache again the church and we go into it instead of and well stranger does show up i think but it's more or less talking about how it's like you've kind of been pressing for so long you kind of have to face the truth now and you got to save basil basil's just in a in in like a like just this pitch black void with the red room and it's like she's calling us out there she's out there opens the door whatever the hell's out there just drags basil out like as if he as if it's past his bedtime and then we get to uh well there's no easy way to put it amori goes in some hands are just strangling basil and bring it closer to Amori, and Amori just stabs Basil. And just walks all over him. And goes up to hey, just... the Hand of Thrones, and then just sits there, just menacingly. He really did not want to hear what Basil had to say. <laughs> really did not. He had enough, he had enough Basil shit. And so we come to one more day... Yeah, and for one the more, uh one more day where aubrey is locked herself into the house get a chance to go in and uh oh boy is uh do we get a window into her life her dad's gone her mom is 
hell if I know, she's completely shut down. The house is filled with garbage and alcohol bottles. The TV's not even on a channel, and her mom is just out of it. Ah, the Helga Pataki syndrome. <laughs> and, so yeah, you can understand why she is uh, the way she is. Yeah, and uh, you have to talk with her. Pretty much, uh, she's angry, but uh, ultimately everyone's there to help her out, and everything goes fine. And then they decide ultimately to go to the one place Sonny also hasn't decided to go, his backyard, where there's a chopped down tree with a pinwheel. And then they converse over Mari and everything. And it's revealed that uh, the reason why Aubrey had such a hatred for Basil was because uh, she took the pictures with Mari, he, he took the picture with Mari in them and scribbled all over them. Which, uh, yeah, that's kind of fucked up. Kind of rude. But as they're helping her through it and give her this group hug, one thing you, you'll notice, as everyone went towards her, Sonny took a step back at first. Yeah. Because there's something here that he doesn't seem to be talking about. But, yeah. And then we get to the old treehouse, they converse and everything. And hey, look, there's a one last picture. And there's a clue that was looted from the original. Don't forget it's in the toy box with a key. Wonder what that's supposed to be. We'll know in a little bit. So then, pretty much after this, everyone's talking and pretty much they say, you know what? We gotta be there for Basil. I don't think it's right for him to be alone. And like, everything he's going through, he should be with friends. So they go over to Basil. He's not really answering the door and they thought, you know what? Let's not leave him. Let's sleep over. And pretty much from then on, they decide to sleep outside in the living room. They converse. They fall asleep. Sonny has one more dream with uh, Basil talking, asking if he'll be forgiven. And in this time, instead of Amori in white space, this time Sonny wakes up in white space. And now we come to, and I'm going to say this, anybody who's really interested in Amori and wants to play it, uh, click off this video right now because we're going to get into the meat of things. That's my cue. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> That's not <what> you <laughs> So we get to white space. I was being close. I <laughs> yeah, we think you. I think you. I'll see y'all later. Oh, okay. All right. All right. <laughs> Alright. Oh, yeah, he actually did leave. <laughs> oh, uh, okay, well, that's that's fine. I prepared for this. Well, Alright, we, well, consider her hooked. <laughs> yeah. I prepared for this, that's why I got, I made a backup of... Uh, that's why I made a backup of it. Uh, yeah, there we go. So I just, I just right. changed up on, on my side. I had the whole thing playing with, uh... I had the whole thing playing with, uh, like me on me in the bottom right and then you on the bottom or me on the bottom left you on the bottom right and uh dooms on the top on the top left and just i switched over to the second one i, I figured this okay one, i figured something looks but yeah let's talk about the let's talk about something <laughs> let's talk about the truth yeah so uh in white space there's always been this little light bulb that doesn't seem to have any light emitting from it Sonny takes it and breaks it, and you see a glimpse of Amori turning around. And in this, uh, Sonny has to face off against something, and and uh, has to face off against all the phobias he's had to deal with throughout the entirety of uh, the throughout the entirety of the game, and to the point where it comes to the point where he's not facing off against something. There's a a blurry image in the. If there's a blurry image that you can't figure out. So he looks, so he calms down, he focuses, and then he persists. And it looks like to be a girl swinging softly. And it's, uh, Sonny can't really bear to see it, but he's persisting. And he overcomes it. And from then on, we get to the meat of the things where he gets a picture of a tree. And he goes past this whole gates, finds Basil, and it's like, you know, the day that the truth of that day is gonna be hard to stomach, but you're gonna have to be able to face it, and when you do, hopefully you'll forgive me for what I've done. 
And, uh, yeah. We get to the, uh... We get to the first can room I, of Sunny's... May I talk about this one? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. Like I said, okay, so... I, like, I've held this in for so long, wanting to talk about this. So, getting into the first room, it starts out simple. Yeah. You're collecting pictures, and it just shows these images that don't make sense at first. Yeah. And... And... Well, Sorry, it's just seeing it, <laughs> seeing it, and having to talk about it. You're just going through the rooms. You just then, then you come into your room after collecting another few pictures. Yeah. It's just. Oh, and you see your bed. Oh, it was Mari's bed, but she gave it to you after you found out you were uncomfortable. Yeah. And then you see the bed that she took. The body isn't moving. And then going through more rooms more pictures you're putting them together you're starting to piece it together yep. until you come in until you come into the living room it seems it's uh, you sit you, uh, before i go on you did you sat down in in the chair yeah you just you need a moment to breathe it all it's all light it's all light and happy but then you get out it's back to normal you see the picture of a demon looking at the mirror you come out into the backyard no oh, well you go through more areas of course collecting more pictures but it's one room one room that has that just shows the truth yeah and before we do this i want to go more and a little into detail about each individual room because i found some de interesting details about them so that go first ahead. room with the living room I apparently I talked to the person on the couch because there's a person on the couch and that's Sonny's mom it was just like I lost my daughter I can't lose you too and I'm like oh god that's and then there's also details like the family portrait scribbled out and then the f and then there's like a hospital room full of like beds full also room full of beds as if it's like it's kind of like Sunny's way of saying like you know oh like Mario will be fine she, she just needs to recover and then there's the f and then there's uh also the details of how as more as the truth gets unveiled um uh, Sonny starts looking more demonic and monstrous his hands his feet all have like red markings on them and then there's scenes like like a stage for a, a stage for a recital and and a stand for sheet music and there's these and there's just like these different and there's just like these different images that pop up and like then there's this one room where it's just like this loud piano crash with Sunny and Maury standing atop of a staircase and it just goes further and further down and then finally we get to the room. Now, I will admit, I did not fully piece this together until I put it all in chronological order and was shown to me. So, right. what had happened is... Take it away, Rashi. Alright. So, before, so uh, before I can give this picture, I gotta, I gotta lay the room. I gotta lay it down. Mari was something of, of a perfectionist as it was described it wasn't described more it was hinted at she loved playing the piano they had gotten sunny had gotten a violin so she could enjoy playing with mari but and one day they had a recital a joint recital to where they could enjoy themselves but as they kept rehearsing and rehearsing sunny had gotten things wrong mari kept saying again and again and again, it had gotten to him. So, in a fit, in a fit of rage, in a fit of anger or frustration, he had thrown the violin down the stairs. Smari, having hearing, having heard the noise, saw what happened. They had gotten into an argument. It must have been the frustration, the rage, or something. But as he had gone to go down the stairs, Mari had gotten in his way. He had only hit. He had only he'd only meant to push her away. But but because of her bad knee from a baseball accident, he pushed her down the stairs and she landed on the violin. 
you can imagine how he felt after that. Yeah. <laughs> I can... You want me to take the rest? Yeah, go ahead. So after all uh, that, and it should, it, it should also be noted, like, just, just to make this clear, like, Sonny, yeah, he had a violin, and I will talk about that later, because it really comes into play as to why Mari was pissed, and I'll talk about that later. Um, right. But... It should be noted that Sonny never really wanted to be a violinist, but the only reason he did it was to be closer with his sister, because she was spending all this time on the piano, she just wanted to spend time with his sister. So, that happens. She gets pushed down the stairs and onto the violin. Sonny is not seeing her move. Basil saw the whole thing go down. And he's going down the stairs, and he's kind of scared because he's thinking oh god she's she's not moving she she's she, she's she's knocked out she's knocked out she's knocked out let's let's, let's go put her in her bed she'll, she'll wake up right so he has basil t pick her up and they both take her to the to the room and they put her in the bed but it becomes evident that uh she's not breathing she's got no pulse and it becomes evident that uh Sonny killed his sister Oh, um, and Basil's thinking, oh god, oh, oh god, he killed his sister, um, what, what, what is he gonna do, what, 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 what is he gonna do, they're gonna think he, uh, did, wait, they're gonna, wait, they, they didn't, nobody saw, right? They, they're, they're not gonna, they're, they're not gonna think he did anything, he, he's a good kid, he wouldn't do anything, he, he, he never do anything like this, it was, it was just an accident, it's just, they, they, they wait, they, what, what accident, they, there was no accident, it, there, and no I'd like to point out by, I'd like to point out by this whole point, Sunny has just shut down. Yeah, Sunny is like next to her bedside, just curled up in a ball, just shut down entirely. And Asla's just thinking like she, there, there was no accident. There, she, she didn't, she didn't get pushed. It's just, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Everything, Sunny, Sunny, look at me. Everything is gonna be okay. And so, Basil sides to have Sonny help him take her downstairs outside to the backyard. They find a tree, they find a jump rope, or just a rope, and they have this toy box. They stand on top of it, and Basil hangs Mari's body to make it look like she killed herself. And and it's noted, and there's a there's a pretty good there's a pretty well done video of the pictures and what they were uh, t describing and everything, where Basil's saying like everything is going to be okay, everything's okay now, and Sunny and Basil walk away. Sunny, this entire time, he's just shut down, but he, at the same time, he's just instinctively listening to what Basil has to say, and for a split second, Basil turns around to see the body. And he's frozen in fear. And he's just held in tight. He can't move. He can't speak. Sonny looks up at him. And he notices something possibly in the reflection of his eye. And he looks back. And he knew he shouldn't have looked back. Because what he saw was Mari's eye peering through her hair. Which forms the something that would haunt both of them. Oh boy. Okay, let's talk about. I mentioned before how I love how this game gives player choice. This is exemplified here because the game tells you absolutely nothing after that point. It gives you those clues, it gives you that context, and it goes, doesn't tell you anything. So let's talk about the neutral endings before we get to the big ending. Okay. Let's talk about the worst one first. So, if you go back to sleep after this point, wake up. Nobody is in the nobody is in the living room. Everyone, even Basil's caretaker, is outside of Basil's door. Aubrey is blaming herself for something. Why did you do it, Basil? Kel is crying. Asking, why does this keep happening to us? Hero is trying to convince himself and Sonny 
You shouldn't see this. You should just go home. You shouldn't have to see this on your last day. We'll be okay, I think. You open the door. Sonny sees Basil on the ground, just stabbed in the gut with something peering back at him. Closes the door, and all of a sudden, that door... Well, that door is no longer there. He's repressed that door. He's repressed Basil. So at this point, you got two options. You can either, one, go home and fall asleep, go back to Dream World, and then just move out like normal, be haunted by Mari. Or two, you can go to sleep, find a knife, if, and find the knife, go to sleep, and then stab yourself awake and kill yourself in the real world. And, yeah, it's like, to some degree, I get why these are the neutral endings, but holy hell, these are fucking, wow, that's a lot to take in. It really is, it's just, is it, what do you say to that? I, really I, I think it's the, the only thing that comes to mind is I can, the only thing that comes to mind is the only thing that Zuko said to Sokka. That's rough, buddy. Well, see, we could, it, we, see, we could say that. We could say that because we've been, th we've been through that, we've experienced it, and time has passed. Right. Who, see, we could say that with a straight face. We could say that with a straight face. All right. Now then. Uh, Let's talk about talked. the both good and bad endings which intertwine with one another, and that is Saving Basil. So, Saving Basil, and like, ultimately... You go in, and you find Basil's room. He's like, do you want to save Basil? Yeah. And he's looking up at the moon. And he's talking about how, like, you know, I didn't realize you were going to be uh, moving in three days. But I mean, like, you know, why did you have to leave? Why did you have to leave? Why did you just leave? Why did you, why did you just stay by my side? It's just like, ever since that day, ever since something tripped Mari. Like, but, I mean, ultimately, you know, it, it couldn't have been you. You're not that type of person, and I couldn't let people think that you were that type of person, but ever since that day, like, something's just been behind you. And, like, ever since this point, it's like, it becomes evident that there is no running from this. Something is closing in, and it's consuming both of them. And, and Basil is just delusional at this point, where he thinks he'll be able to fix everything. He fixed it last time. He can fix it this time. He'll be able to fix everything. He'll be able to stop the something. And it becomes apparent that, uh... Yeah, you're gonna have to fight your way out of this. Using the method from before to deal with the trauma. Yeah, that's not possible anymore. You're gonna have to start fist fighting with, uh, Sunny. Or, fist fighting with Basil. It's gotten... It has gotten so bad, so erratic to that point, that by the end of it, <laughs> Basil just up and stabs you with what see yeah. it's hidden it's hidden because of the menu but what he was holding in his hand was his was his garden shears yes and he just up and stabs you right in the face with him yep and and uh like it's just in during that point and i, I should note like there is actually apparently a deleted scene where during that point sunny becomes incredibly stressed out like, he's just, he can't take it anymore, and he starts going berserk. The meter that's been used to perform, like, all that attacks at this point starts becoming a heart rate to the point where it starts, everything is going to be okay, and goes out of chaotic. And, uh, in the deleted scene, there's a, there's just a, there's just a slight image of Amori peering, sing, signifying that Amori is taking over. But that, that got taken out. But yeah, uh, that whole thing goes off. Basil stabs Sonny, and both of them collapse, and all you hear is ambulance sirens. And then we get to the forgiveness scene, where Sonny makes his way home. He comes across Basil, and it's just like, that day was hard to accept, you know? Both of us, like, we did something we can never be, like, we, we, we can never really make up for. That's something that's gonna be with us for the rest of our times, but... We'll have to forgive ourselves. Like, hopefully, you can, if you can forgive me and forgive yourself, hopefully we can move on from this. Basil gives him a hug and goes, you know, like, uh, what you do next is up to you, man. I really hope you're able to forgive yourself. 
goes into the house. Everything's nice, and even, there's there's even like a there's even like a portrait of the happy family together. And Mari's in the other room playing, saying like, "Hey, you know, uh, it's it's been tough. I know you've had to endure this. Maybe I was hard on you. Maybe it's just maybe I shouldn't have pushed you as hard as I possibly could, but." Regardless, like, I'm happy for you, brother. And I know whatever happens next, like, you'll forgive yourself, right? And so you're pretty much ha ready for whatever. So, uh, yeah. And you go into the room adjacent to the piano room. And it's a dark room with a toy box. You open up the toy box. And it's a broken violin with sheet music bloodied and hair entangled. You go outside... And there's a long road with rain coming down. Every street post light opens up a new memory. At first you get like memories with them on a beach just having some fun and enjoying watermelon. Others you get memories of just uh, Basil and Kel Aubrey and, and Kel Aubrey and Sonny in the rain. And you also get alluded to the fact that Sonny does have a crush on Aubrey. And then you get more, and then you also get uh, a bit of a detail on how, like, one Christmas one Christmas night, they give Sonny this big present where they all pitched in and bought him a violin, which definitely, in retrospect, justifies Mari's anger. He just kind of broke something. They, they put all of their love and care into giving him, and he broke it. And... Then, later on, we get to more of the memories from the photo album playing out. And eventually, it starts raining and it starts snowing. The violin pieces itself bit together, bit by bit. We come to a point where we open a door. And Kel, Aubrey, and Hero are there. They're pretty much talking about, yeah, you have to do this. It might be hard to accept. Hell, we might not forgive you outright, but we're still going to be with you. You just gotta believe in us. Like, ultimately, you're ready for this. You just gotta be able to confront it. What you do next is up to you entirely. And then, Sonny gets up onto the stage, puts the sheet music down with the new tended violin, plays the track that, plays the song that Mario was playing on the violin and breaks down in tears. And then, gets back into white space and has to confront his final boss, his shadow, himself, Amori. And before I go any further, I wanna say that this is one of the best boss fights in RPG. Like, this is, oh God, I'm, I'm trying to say this clearly, but I'm actually kinda of cheering up. I mean, it's hard not to when talking about Amori. Yeah. But, alright, I'll try this. <sighs> the track that plays in this, it is really well done, like the Amori track. And what I love about it is that as time goes on and the battle continues, the track that goes from this really well piercing violin gets tuned out to this, this demented static sounds. The more time goes on, the more Omori becomes deranged and the more Omori becomes demented and like cursed looking. The more the surroundings of white space become more cursed and more demonic and the more it hits. As the entire battle this time it plays off as you just need to defeat Omori with the violin. You can do it, Sonny. And you just have to rely on your friend's words of wisdom and put your trust into them. But it becomes apparent. Amori starts talking. You sit, it's like, you say you care, but you really don't. Truth is, you rely too much on others. The more time goes on, people like you should just die. The more time goes on, like, like you loved Mori. And at the end, like, what did it get you? In the end, you, you were the one who killed her. You're a monster. People like you don't deserve to live. As time goes on, like, eventually... It becomes apparent that just being able to stay calm, focused, and persisting, and overcoming and everything, and dealing with the violin, it's not enough. Because it becomes... It, it doesn't work. It starts not working, and it's basically like, 
You know, you loved her, and you killed her. Aubrey loved her, and you killed her. Kel loved her, and you killed her. Hero loved her, and you killed her. You loved your sister, and you're the one who killed her. And eventually it becomes apparent that, uh, yeah, Amori has a point. This isn't... And it eventually comes to the point where Sunny loses. And it's, it, it's interesting because this is, like, what's interesting is that it's a really great battle because this is when you technically can't win. Because it's like, ultimately, it's true. It's true. Everything Amori says is true. This isn't something he can... This isn't something like what Amori do, was doing with Basil. This isn't something Sunny can just silence. This isn't something Sunny can just kill. This is something that is going to stick with him for the rest of his life. Yeah. And there's no, there's no changing that. There's no throwing that away there's there's nothing i like the way they did this entire boss fight because yeah. it's basically it's basically a more it's basically a mori speaking shouting out what sunny is thinking this whole time you can't just what how he feels about himself you can't just you can't just wave that away you can't just brush that under the table and what I love about I love about this because there's someone who actually pointed this out. I looked into this. There's actually someone that pointed this out and phrased it beautifully. Well, for one, people definitely saying, and I 100% agree with this. I don't care what people say. And someone said this. I don't care what people say. Sonny is not a monster. Sonny was forgiven for what he did. It may have taken days, months, or years, but he was forgiven. He was not a monster for what he did. And 100%, I agree with it because he's not a monster. He it was entirely an accident. But. And then there's other, something else is. here. I, I, I'll let you finish after this. Is. But it's something else is that what they said was apparently there are, people can do bad things, but that does not make them bad people. It's yeah. It it makes it it is a fair point. It doesn't inherently make them bad people, and. It, there was also these thoughts in Sonny's head, like, maybe if, um, although it also appears to, it also uh, ties into uh, his skill names like Call Down, Persist, and Focus. Yeah. yeah. It's it's basically, if I had just calmed down in that moment, if I had just focused on what I could say next, if I could just persist and just talk this out, she wouldn't have had to die. It was all if I could just. Yeah, and but I'll, I'll that even isn't what argue, happens. I'll even argue it even takes place before that because it was during it was on the day of the final cell. If I had just calmed down and tried again, if I if I just calmed down and tried again with the violin, if I just focused and tried with the violin to get it right, if I had just persisted and instead of giving up, just persisted with the violin, if I had overcome this hurdle. I could have still have been a, had a sister, and we could have still have been happy family. But then we get to the point where it all comes to a crux, which is the continue screen. That Omori fight is completely and utterly unwinnable, and you're given a chance where you get either continue no or yes. Let's talk about the no first, because it's the bad ending. If you say no to this... You don't try again. There is no try again. Sunny gives up, and Amori takes over, and Amori ends up back into the dream world where he gets to go play with Kel, Mari, and uh, Kel, Mari, and uh, or not Kel, not Mari, Kel, Aubrey, and Hero. Hero. And goes up and goes out of the playpen, and it's weird because it's a different place. It's a giant platform, and he's and it seems like a warrior Sunny's in different clothes, and it's foggy, but there's a little gate open, and it's like it's a long way down. Do you want? Do you want to jump? And so began the point that spawned <laughs> so many dark humor jokes. I made a joke myself to this, of course. Um, in a response to the bad ending, I made that Russian badger meme, where it's just in response to the bad ending, Amori, don't send out an Amber Alert, you're not getting it back. <laughs> God. It, 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 
it, the song itself just makes it better because oh, yeah. it was the song we played in the trailers. Um, like, fucking, the bow in my time to Amori is Megalovania to Undertale. Just the first note, yeah. close, and then just oh, everyone God. knows what you're talking about. And, oh god, the comments on that song, it's just, it's a bird, it's a play- OH SH! <laughs> this dropped harder than Sonny on the rooftop! The hospital, the hospital has to be that tall to hold all the people who need therapy. Like, oh god, just oh, so many dark humor jokes. I just love that. I love see, that. They make, see, they make, all the, they make all these dark humor jokes and all these memes about Amori. Because it's our way to cope. It's our way of coping. <laughs> the joke just pops in your head and that's it. Yep. <laughs> yeah. And remember, every Kel meme is canon. <laughs> you say, how oh, I got your address? Don't even worry about that. <laughs> and we get it's to... Just... I, I think we should talk about this finally. We get to the continue. Yes. After this, Sunny is shown he's kind of defeated but he doesn't give up he gets back up and he plays the violin again and it's a in in his mind it's this duet of the song that it's a duet of a much better composed song that has been playing of the title with mari on the piano and sunny on the violin and amori finally succumbs and gives in and Sonny goes up to the door in the white space, turns around, gives a bow, and leaves. And he wakes up with an eye pat with a bandaged patched eye in a hospital gown in a hospital bed, woke up, donned entirely in blue colors. And I think for the first time in his life, because I honestly think that while the moment that Mari died, I think ultimately he shut down. Um, they don't really show him crying. But for the first time in this game, I think he legitimately was able to cry and let his feelings go out. Exactly. He, it, it, it all... It was all building up, and that final moment of acceptance caused the, uh, caused the dam to burst. Yeah. And he goes out into the hospital, and like... I know it's like you look in the mirror and ultimately like yeah it's just like it's a lot more brighter it's a lot more warmer you go outside and you go outside the door and you go into the hallway and hey look it's Kel and Hero and they're going up there and I found out that yeah that's leading towards the rooftop <laughs> yeah. uh, and good thing I didn't go there then because I saw the shadow of Basil go down somewhere else so I followed him and I got to Basil's room. Kel, Aubrey, and Hero are there with Basil on his bed. And, and it's here. He says, "You hear yes." The first line in ev in he he's ever spoken in a long time. Yeah. There's something I have to tell you. And it ends there. And well, I mean, technically speaking, it ends there because uh, if you do the true ending, which is basically if take care of Basil's garden. Basil wakes up and sees Sonny with something behind him, but Sonny, Sonny actually smiles with tears in his eyes, and the something vanishes. The something behind Basil, it vanishes as Basil smiles as well, and then you see the stump with a pinwheel and flowers, and that's it. Okay, so, what Is did you this think? This out of everything. Uh, out of everything, when I first... I'll say it again. When I first came into this game seeing the psychological horror attack, I thought this was just gonna be uh, one of those cut, tried, and true rip-offs of horror games with the jump scares and all that. But playing through it, it, it gripped me in ways most games didn't didn't and couldn't in fact i think the most recent game that gripped me like this well game series that gripped me like this is the xenoblade series <laughs> oh, okay and it was mostly because i it made me care about the characters 
it made me want to see them get through what they were getting through. It, I wanted to see Sunny find peace. Find Sunny, have Sunny and Basil find peace at the end of it all. And I'm going to admit it. When the final duet played, I cried. We all cried. Yeah, I, oh God, it was that whole final, that, that whole end game, I cried. It was just, oh man. But yeah, when Sonny got back up and began to play, it was like, yep, he, he, he wouldn't give up. He, it wasn't a matter of he couldn't get up, give up, because if he did give up, then it would just, he'd be tripping up at the finish line and reverting back to how he used to be. He was he was taking that step for he made himself take that step forward to relive all of that to to forgive himself and find peace and I wanted to see it through to the end. Yeah, that's really good. that's thanks for that. Uh, ultimately, with me, when I was coming into it, I got sick and tired of the jump scare games and films the torture points like i hate i i just hate when horror is just amounted to just that i really wanted something to i this is why i like psychological horror because i wanted something to just just fucking fuck me over like deal psychological and emotional damage to me i wanted to feel i wanted to really think about what i was playing and when I saw this, I was like, on face value, okay, this ticks off the boxes, it's Dementin, and I was thinking, okay, you know what, this is basically like, I don't know, like a kid's, it, it's basically like a, like a kid's color book version of Corpse Party. Like, I, you know, I, I, can, I can take that, you know what, that's fine. I get in it now, it's just like, okay, what is the, what is the big mastermind deal here? I was thinking, okay, uh, Sonny and Baz, uh, Sonny killed, Sonny killed Mari and, and made Basil become an accomplice. I was, I was trying to think of like this whole Machiavellian scheme when in reality it was like, the answer was so simple. They were kids. <laughs> and it was an accident. It was an accident. I like, the answer was so simple. I was just, I was, I was, again, I was just trying to play 4D chess when the game was playing regular chess. I was trying to think outside the box when the answer is like, no, 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 no. The box is the answer. It was, they were playing checkers the whole time. They were playing checkers the whole time. And, oh god, it's just like, when I was talking about how the dream world is like, inherently like, it's just the weakest part of the game, and it's intentional, and this is what I mean, is that the shut-in route is like, yeah, you get to know all these characters, you get to know SpaceX boyfriend, you get to know, like, Kel Aubrey and Hero, you get to know Mario, you get to know Basil, you get to know all these great characters, but it's all in Sonny's head. He never spent that time with Kel, Aubrey, Hero, and Basil. He never spent that time. All of that is in his head, so much so that it, everything becomes that much more hollow and that much more fake and weak. And that's what I like about it. It's intentional. And, and when you decide to open the door, it all starts breaking down. <laughs> yeah, it starts breaking down. Like, there are stuff like, oh, now I get why there's dr that, that reference is drawn. Oh, and now I get why that's happening. And, oh, God, it's just... I... And it's just, like... I do... I, out of curiosity, I do have to wonder... Who do you think... Who do you think... Uh, did you actually get to ship anybody in this game? Uh, I want to. I, 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 I'm a, I'm a tried and true Sonny Aubrey. <laughs> I, I feel that. Like, I, I heard some people go. It's like, well, I kind of like Sonny and Basil. I'm like, oh god, that's toxic. Like, that is hundred percent toxic. Ooh, whoa, whoa, like, no, no. you want the, you want, I know, like, oh, okay, oh boy, it's like two little boys being gay. That's great. But you want the guy who was responsible for accidentally murdering his sister and brought his own friend and accomplice to be a relationship? How fucking toxic is that? That's just, either Sonny would have been the one controlling or Basil would have been the one controlling. They both would have been controlling each other. Yeah, they, it was just, it's just, no, it was like, at least with Sonny and Aubrey, there is like some hint to like, yeah, they actually do kind of shift some feelings for each other to the point where, yeah, I could see it happening. Outside of that, and Outside of that, um, I would have to say Mario and Hero. Well, that was obvious. Yeah, I have to say obvious. I, I didn't know. We should just say it. 
I did see yeah. like there was someone actually that made fan art. I don't remember where. I could probably find it, but there's someone that made fan art of uh, Sunny and Basil together, but also or not not Sunny and Basil, Sunny and Aubrey together, but also Basil and Aubrey's friend Kim. And I honestly kind of think like that that's kind of interesting. Yeah, I, I could see that working. Yeah. But uh, yeah. honestly, the fan art I've seen of uh, Sunny and Aubrey is like, yeah, I can see it working. Plus, yeah. I. I'm willing to believe, yeah, they, they, that they did forgive him at the end. Yeah. I'm, it might not have been right away, I, but they did. Yeah, and, like, here's the thing, and, it's like, I know there are people who ultimately, like, don't, it, it, like, have this uh, idea of forgiveness being, like, you know, everything is okay, everything's, everything's fine now, but, I mean, like, here's the thing about forgiveness. Forgiveness is not erasure. Like, that is, th th that's the truth, is that... Just because someone is forgiven for what they have done, that doesn't automatically mean that, oh, now, we, we just forget about what they did in the past, and, like, they're a completely new character, and we don't have to, and, like, no, 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 forgiveness, no, there's none of that. yeah, forgiveness is, yeah, I fucked up, yes, I burned down my family house, yes, I, yes, I ran over that old lady and put her in a hospital, but I am fully aware of this, I'm, and I fully wear this, and I'm beating myself up for it, and I'm going to do what I can in order to make sure I don't do something like that in the past, or something like that doesn't happen before. And forgiveness is not, like, again, like what you said, it's, I don't personally, I personally don't think that it's just going to happen immediately. But I personally think that, yeah, they are going to be angry at him. Because, of course, like, they all loved Mari, and hearing him find out that Basil, particularly Sunny, killed Mari, and Basil and Mari... Basil and Sonny were the ones to stage it like a suicide. Yeah, they're gonna be angry at him. But I imagine at the very least, the day that the day that everything was like you know going, everything was all set up and they were moving out. Um, my in my mind, what plays out is that let Hero or like Hero kill Aubrey, like the and even Basil, like they all come up to see. Sonny just as he's as he's like leaving and they don't really have much to say because they it's like a lot of conflicting emotions but they just they, they just like they just kind of like very but like they kind of very like hard to say for them but they kind of wish him well and they they say take care and pretty much that that's it and as that goes on pretty much Sonny goes off and moves I think, uh, yeah, yeah. It's it. No, it's. I was. I was. Thought I had something else to say. I think. Ah, uh, just this. This whole thing has me fucked up. I'll gladly admit. This. Yeah. I love this game. I love this yeah, game. Yeah, it's 100. percent This game. This is why I was like. This is why I. It was ever encouraged. Like, yeah, we're getting to heavy spoiler details. If you haven't played the game, heavily recommend you if you wanted to try it. But, yeah, you know what, ultimately I'd say, honestly, I think that's a good enough note to leave off on, honestly. Yeah, so, like, to all of you at, uh, all of you watching this and whatnot, whether this is, like, you're watching this as it's coming out, thank you all so much for joining. Uh, Rashi, if you have, do you have any, like, social media you want to plug? People can follow you. Uh, nope, I'm just glad to have been on here, but I, before we go, can I at least say a few final words? Sure. Uh, it's not. It's never easy to own up to what you've done in the past, but I feel like the, if you truly feel like you want to make yourself a better person, just make sure. Hey, even if you have to do it alone at the time, just know there are always going to be people that'll help. That'll help you through it all. Yeah. So yeah, that's it so may not be. It may not be sudden, it may not be in the week or so, but just know it's always there. So look to the sky and just say, good morning. <laughs> I think that's pretty great note to pop off on. So yeah, if you, if you want to see more discussions on this, I'll be more than, I'll be more than up to, uh, like, to, I'll be more than up to talking more about uh, video games, because the reason why I wanted to do a Mori, like, initially I was going to do this as, like, a whole video, but it's just, like, I thought this was going to be a lot more easier in the grand scheme of things. 
And it was not. It was not. But I will admit, talking about it in a in over a two hour discussion was a relatively a lot easier than having to edit all of the footage of Amori and go back and forth with it. Yeah. I don't know how Nitro does it. <laughs> oh god. It, it's it, it, it's much like much like this game, it is kind of the lesser of the two unfortunate truths. Yeah. But yeah. So thank you all so much for joining. If you want to see more of this, please feel please feel free to subscribe. If you want to support me, if you can and want to, I have a Ko-Fi. Follow me on Twitter, uh, Instagram, uh, check out my portfolio on ArtStation. And if you do want to check out Amori, I have it uh, on the right side here. It's available on Nintendo Switch, PlayStation, Xbox, and Steam. So, yeah, thank you all so much for joining us. And uh, hopefully, if uh, there is another topic to discuss, we'll see you all in the next one. And y'all take care of yourselves now. Yeah, bye.